Breakwaters is a survival game set in a procedural archipelago like open world that is very reminiscent of one of the Disney's recent classics, Vayana, or Moana, depending on where the world are you. The archipelago is vast and beautiful and full of things to explore, whether it's shipwrecks, ruins of ancient civilizations, artifacts, or just wildlife, there are plenty of things to see and do. However, this lush and beautiful world is not without dangers. Massive titans roam the landscape and can cause havoc and destructions on an unprecedented scale. The most visible is the turtle titan that you can always see somewhere looming on the horizon. Its massive beam attack can decimate your structures and boats within seconds. Your role in the world is to survive, build a settlement and later on a boat that will help you explore the archipelago, trade with passing fishermen, voyage through dangerous storms, fight the titans and unravel the mysteries of ancient civilization. The game features a unique mechanic in terms of displacing water with powerful crystals harvested from the world. This provides interesting possibilities to explore shipwrecks, build water holding tanks, flooding the valleys, etc. The resemblance with the Vayana cartoon goes so far that everything from the visual style the look of the houses, boats, the interaction with the ocean feels like you're in a Vayana cartoon. Remember one of the first scenes in the ocean moves away to reveal the shells and the heart of the Tefiti to baby Vayana? This game made it, made it into a mechanic. You build crystals that will displace the water revealing the contents below. Remember the Tamatoa? The developer stated that this game features a crab titan, or perhaps Teka. Even the titans feel as if they were ripped out of the Disney's concept art. And that's a good thing. The titans are envisaged as a massive, almost island-sized world bosses that are an extreme challenge to take on and each of them have their own traits and vulnerabilities. I have not yet faced any of them due to some of the negative traits of the game that I have experienced over the few hours that I had the chance to play, but more on that later. Apart from the titans, there are other threats in the world such as crabs, elementals, thieves and even wildlife that can sometimes be very annoying. The game is in the early access and it clearly shows uh, in pretty much every aspect of the game. The UI feels simplistic, the mission dialogues are sometimes buggy, heck, even certain keystrokes are not permitted when entering a simple text field such as a name. Try pressing U or E when entering the character name as of making this review, I dare ya. The balance and the grind need some work as at this stage the game is very grindy. Some of the missions take long time to do and sometimes it is not clear as to what you are required to do as a player and where you should go to begin with. Grindiness could perhaps be explained with the fact that the game attempts to be a co-op multiplayer experience which is currently in beta. In beta. However, I feel that in the case of single player definitely needs its own set of rules or requirements as more often than not. I found myself wandering aimlessly trying to find that yellow crystal, or the next objective in general. The inventory management is the next issue. Your pockets get filled up very quickly and constructing a mere wood box requires so many resources that you need to chop up five trees just to get one. Also, a good portion of resources you gather have not clear purpose and are simply useless. A pop-up explaining what they could be used further down the low the road would go a long way here to prevent stuffing your inventory with what you do not need and simply just dumping a bunch of stuff. The final gripe I have with the game is within the missions themselves. Several starter missions require you to go and visit far off islands when you really don't have not established your base or done pretty much anything other than to do one or two tutorial missions. This needs to be more rethinking, as it would reduce unnecessary very long travel times that do not have a clear purpose. Don't get me wrong, traveling from one island to the next is okay, as long as it is the part of progression, but this feels more like random and unplanned. I have not yet tested the multiplayer, but from what I've heard of from my friends, it's quite buggy. However, hopefully I will get a chance to test it more in the future and I'll report back. Don't get me wrong. The game looks nice, and it has lots of potential, however, at this stage it clearly needs a lot of work 
and given that the game is a work of a small studio of only 5 developers, it is quite impressive what they were able to cram in thus far. So my vote, uh, I would not write it off just yet, just keep it on my wishlist and see how much it gets improved and how quickly. If the developers manage to fix the balancing, and by here I mean the grindiness, the missions and the multiplayer experience quickly, this game could be a wonderful, relaxing experience set in a beautiful cartoonish world where one can easily get lost in voyaging in the archipelago. At the time of writing this review, the game is priced at reasonable 16.79 euro and there is a value for that money. However, for the time being, my recommendation is keep it on a Steam wishlist and observe the community comments and the rate of fixes and updates and who knows in time this one has the potential to be great thank you much for watching this is survival joe and i'll see you in my next video